Hello everyone. Welcome to the Back to Basics teacher training program. I'm Marlene Moore. You should know me by now if you looked at all of the other videos. I hope by now that you have books 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You're going to need them in the next videos, um, as well as the companion books that go with them, uh, such as Making Melodies and Playwright Book 1 and 2. Take a look at all of them on the J.W. Pepper site. Very, very important. I also hope that you have the sort of manual of the Back to Basics program. It's called Performing Without Fear. It's to do with uh, performance anxiety, but it's also to do with the uh, whole idea of the Back to Basics program. Okay, uh, last video we did a bit of a review. This video we're going to start book six. I'm not going to play all the pieces because if you're a qualified teacher, you should know how to play them. But I am going to do some references to a lot of them. Uh, something changes in book six. We have black key major scales. The finger chart at the beginning is so important. It's showing you how to place your fingers on the black key scales. Some people have problems with the black key scales and they don't know why. Because all of the fingers, the suggested fingering in a lot of books doesn't work. That's what happens. But if you think of rabbit ears, two and three, to go on the groups of two, it will work. And threesies, two, three, four, to always go on the groups of three black keys. So again, twosies on, I'm playing C sharp, D sharp here. And three, two, three, four on the black keys. It works every time with only one exception. So if you have a manual that's telling you what fingering to do, check it out. I, I don't know what manual you have, but it will work better. And it's the same thing here, only the 3-2 the three, instead of 2-3. <clears throat> so that's C-sharp major. Let's try... Um, B flat major. Starting on my fourth finger because it says two, three, four. Yep, it works. So that's a harder one because you can't see all the black keys where you can't, I haven't got a finger for each black key. But try it, it's really easy. So that's one way to teach them, and it's the way I, I used to use different fingering, but I started using this because <clears throat> someone told me about it years ago. So easy, so much easier, and I do uh, like to teach the children that way too. Okay, turn to page six on book six, and we've got Musette. Nice octaves. I like teaching the left hand first with this one so that um, they're aware of it because it gets a bit tricky in that second half. Um, this would be your first step. If the student has a problem with that, go this far put a stop sign in there. Stop, think, go. Um, this would be then step two. Alrighty. This would be step three. Step four. Or you can, if, if they're uh, um, very, very uh, musical students, you might say this is step one. Thank you. 
If they're extremely musical, with a good ear, try this hands together step one. And so on. Um, with this piece, I have quite often taught the second half of the piece first, because it's more difficult. This is the difficult place. Oh. For me too. I always have a, a problem with that. I always have to go over that, over and over and over that, because it's bouncing all over the place. Well, why not take that second half and teach it first, and then give them a reward of learning the easier part second? Okay? If you have questions about this, be sure to ask me in the group. I hope that if you're just watching this by yourself uh, on YouTube that and you haven't joined our group, that you do that because you'll pick up extra pointers by joining our group. We have over 600 teachers now in our Back to Basics teacher training, oh, excuse me, Back to Basics piano teacher training group. Back to Basics Piano Teacher Training Group. And some lovely teachers. You'll learn lots of things. Uh, mostly we watch videos because uh, you can keep repeating. You can go back and watch the video again and again. So if you're new to this, make sure that you are watching books or videos 1 to uh, 17 first before you're watching any of these other videos. There's, it's important to do them in a chronological order. I just got new glasses and I, I tried the other one the other day and I'm having trouble focusing. I finally went back to my, my old glasses. <laughs> anyway, do you do that? Um, now we're going to sleep my child, the old Welch tune. I love this piece. It is a sight reading piece, so have them take it a little bit at a time. There is a, um, how many counts does each note get down at the bottom? I have them do that, check their books. And it's, you know, some children need more help with writing stuff. If you have a, a student who likes to write out things and they learn things better from writing them out, Get them one of those playwright books, playwright book one, playwright book two. Or um, if they are auditory kinesthetic learners, get them one of those composer's notebooks and give them little things to do. You know, how many counts does this note get? And um, give them little tiny assignments, not pages and pages, something that will pique their interest. I've had several students like that. Um, two of them ended up as composers. Yes, they did. Anyway, uh, they're all different, aren't they? Ukrainian folk song. Love the picture here. Just love the picture. So we're now on page eight in the book. Um, this is also a sight reading piece. So take it easy. Just do one hand at a time. not finished because the rest of it goes in another book but we're still only at book six you know they're just in an intermediate thing here um, at level and I don't like pushing too much on them at, at once here's a playwright example of what is in the playwright book and there at the bottom is your handy dandy um, scales with sharps and there they are the student can refer to those I realize this elegy piece you know the the uh, Hollywood uh, movie called La La Land they actually took this 
piece and turned it into something for La La Land. Uh, I was watching that movie not that long ago and I thought, that's Elegy by Nolette. That's not La La Land. But anyway, they do anything nowadays. Lord knows what they'll do with my music someday. Here we go, we are in C minor. Always, 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 I'm pointing my finger at you, but always play the scale first. That tunes up the ears. Get your students to play the scale before they play the piece. Most students don't even look at the key signature. Make sure you point that out. Anyway, this is a rote piece. Or you can teach it by sight if the student needs more help with sight reading or if they prefer sight reading. By now you get to know your student fairly well, right? Alrighty, here we go. Elegy. That's a beautiful piece. I like, it says to play this C for the last one, but I like the low one. I just love the, the, the resonance of that nice little C. What would happen for a repeat if you did it an octave higher? Wouldn't that be fun? So you've ended here. And then you go up just the right hand, an octave higher. for a recital piece. I hope when your students um, are back to you know one-on-one -on -one lessons that you will video them. Get the parents permission. You will video them. Video them for us to hear on our teacher training group. That would be so much fun. Then we, don't forget finish the melody. So 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 important. You're making melodies book Finish the melody. Here, here we go, here's the melody. They get to write out the rest of the melody. Some of it they just trace because they're still learning how to do a full page of finishing the melody. But that's fun, have them do it. you need to learn how to do it too. If you are not an auditory learner or a kinesthetic learner, it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, <laughs> that's a pun, should be finger at finger. But if you are an auditory learner or if you're not an auditory learner and you have trouble uh, improvising, get that book, Making Melodies. It's my best-selling book, as a matter of fact. It's sold all over the world. Make sure that you do the exercises. It start, starts out really, really easy. By the middle of the book, it's um, you're, you're able to do it much more easily to put a left hand with the right hand. By the end of the book, you might be composing little tunes. You never know. You have to try. But, you know, you can't, ex you can't expect your students to do things that you can't do easily. In my day, I had to learn to be a much better sight reader because some of my students were better sight readers than I was. You know, that, that could be kind of embarrassing when you, when you get into a, a very, very extremely difficult work. 
I did become a pretty good sight reader over the years. I had to be a good sight reader in order to become a concert pianist, and I did. I, I got better at it. But I will always, always, always be my natural, normal self, which is auditory, ear, auditory, and I will have to struggle more with the sight reading because that's how I learn. Um, you may be the opposite. You may be the same as me. Let me know. Let me know how you learn. I'd be very interested to know that. Okay, we're on to um, Allegro. Allegro. I'm sure you've had this one. This is a, a one of those happy pieces by Mozart, right? It's written in D major. Your choice. Do you want to teach it by rote? I would teach that one by sight if the child needs more help with sight reading or if they like sight reading better. I would do that. Okay, what have we got here? Uh, finish the song using whole note, half note, and dotted half note. That's not too hard. Children like doing that. But you know what I learned? You have to do that the lesson. You, they, they don't want to do it at home. They're too lazy nowadays. Scale of D minor, here we go. I love playing scales. I just, most people hate playing scales. I love playing scales. They're so musical and predictable and uh, logical. Do you like playing scales? Do you play your scales? They're very good for you. I tell the children they're the vitamins for the fingers. <laughs> they're, they're the vitamins for the chill, for the fingers. They, they like that. Here we go. Echo says. I'm lost. This is the glasses. Love, love, love that piece. It's by Hummel. Hummel wrote that. Love that. It's in C major. Make sure they play the scale first. There's a little story about Hummel right here. Um, I would I would teach that by rote. It's kind of advanced. Um, then we've got ledger lines here. Uh, Largo. We all know the the tune to that. By Dvorak. Um, he was from Czechoslovakia, from Prague. I've been to Prague. Have you ever been to Prague? Beautiful city. Anyway, I would teach that by sight. Uh, it, it's just a, an interesting story. And you can tell the children that it's from the New World Symphony that uh, Dvorak wrote. Then we can go on to Haydn, Country Dance. I think we've all learned this at one time. Remember learning that one? That's always a fun one. Um, again, if your student is really good at sight reading and they know their D major scale, I would teach that partially by rote and partly as in sight reading. In other words, I'd have the book up there and teach them a combination of both. 
Uh, this is an improvisational piece that I wrote, Etude in D Major. It's actually an adaptation from the original. It's in D Major as well. Okay. Um... glasses again. <laughs> um, if you, the other part used to go and then I used to turn it into minor. I'm getting carried away with improvising which I hope you will do. I hope you will get carried away with improvising. It's so much fun, it really is. And um, you know, I hope you will get away from this idea of pointing to the notes and what note is that and play that note and the old boring traditional way. I'm not saying that traditional piano is necessarily always boring. I found it quite boring, but. It's not always boring, but some of it, sometimes it's pretty boring. Mix it up. Sometimes teach them by rote. Do games. Okay? I'll see you on the next video. Have fun. Bye.